They're too busy talking at the back. So welcome all of you who are joining us either in person or online or later on YouTube or cable TV. Today we are celebrating the sacrament of communion. For those who are not here in person, take a moment to gather some bread or crackers and juice so that you may join us in this sacrament. We use the screens during our service so that all ca can participate. The words in red are for me as the worship leader, and the words in bold black are for everyone else. Let us join together then as we acknowledge the land on which we worship. We acknowledge the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek Nation, the people of the three fires, known as the Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Padawatomi nations. We further give thanks to the Chippewas of Saugeen and the Chippewas of Nawash, now known as the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, as the traditional keepers of this land. Our thanks compel us to live fully into our journey of reconciliation, a seven-generation process of intentional listening and learning. We seek to live together in respect, friendship, and peace. Therefore, we commit ourselves to follow Jesus' calling us into the world, to love one another as we are loved by God. So a couple of uh, announcements. First, after the service here, there is a plant and preserve sale downstairs. So uh, go down and check and see who preserved what. And, and what plants are available for you to nurture. The UCW Sunshine main, uh, Unit is meeting on the 12th of October, and all the women of the congregation are welcome. In the two to three months, and in, in two to three months, the approved Afghan family is scheduled to arrive, so we once more highlight the need for funds to support them as they adjust to life in Canada. We are looking for volunteers, old, middle, and young. All are welcome. You can call or e email me for uh, more information. If you have grandchildren or children that are looking for um, volunteer hours, we will also sign for those. So, um, now I lost my page. You know, that's what happens when you don't number them. Oh, I know why, because I double-sided it. Just need to turn it over. But it is with great sadness that I share with you that Marion Boyd has been diagnosed with fourth stage pancreatic cancer. Marion has requested, and this is her request, that if you wish to contact her, please only send short emails that may or may not be answered. And to refrain, please, from visiting calling, sending flowers or cards. I'd ask you to please honor her wishes and keep Marion and her family in your thoughts and your prayers. I would go, go on to say that she is well cared for. She has a very good team in place. She has lots of family that are, are surrounding her. Um, and um, I keep telling her that she is well loved by this church and the wider church. Um, and so she would be grateful for your prayers. As the church has done for generations, may the peace of Christ be with you. I would invite you from where you are to share with those around you. Uh, so with a peace sign, a namaste, a hi, how are ya? Eventually we will get so that you can, you know, actually touch each other. It'll be a strange ex thing to do. So I would also say just, and I've thrown the tech crew way, way off, but I would also say that um, we are going to start doing a few things, not next Sunday because it's Thanksgiving, but the Sunday after, we are actually going to have coffee at the back of the church before the service. So 
So let us now prepare ourselves for worship. We light this Christ candle, hopefully. We light this Christ candle to remind ourselves that we are called to bring light, the light of Christ, out of this building. We are to take it out of this building and into the world around us so that everyone will know and experience God's love, God's peace, and God's justice. Let us join together in the call to worship and the prayer of approach. Creating one, here we are, a gathering of your people, evidence of creation's unfolding. We come, all shapes and all sizes, all ages and all life stages, we come on dancing feet or carefully walking. We come hesitant and unsure or filled with conviction and knowing our way. However we come, we are here to join with all creation in praise and thanksgiving. Accept our gift of worship as with one voice, one hope, one love, we gather into praise. Let us gather into praise, singing all things bright and beautiful.
the choir's gonna think I am directing them, but you people are all looking so serious. We're thinking about how beautiful and great that God made, and we're all being bright. <laughs> we need some more enthusiasm, some more love and care and joy. And now I'm gonna talk about survivors. The Honorable Murray Sinclair has stated about the truth and reconciliation that education has gotten us into this mess. Education has gotten us into this mess and it's education that will get us out. So, for the next, well, it, so the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was charged to listen to the survivors, their families, their communities, and the others who were affected by residential schools, and to educate the Canadians about their experiences. The resulting collection of statements, documents, and other materials now forms the sacred heart of the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation. The survivor's flag is the expression of remembrance. It's meant to honor residential school survivors and all the lives and communities impacted by the res residential school system in Canada. Each element depicted on the flag was carefully selected by survivors from across Canada who were consulted in the flag's creation. Here's what it looks like after that careful con consultation. Over the next nine weeks, we will be examining the symbols here on the flag to educate ourselves to what each design is meant to convey so that when we put the flag up in the sanctuary and put the lawn sign, that's what this is actually, is a lawn sign, we put the lawn sign out in front of the church, it gives us an idea of what our indigenous brothers and sisters are trying to tell us in this flag. The family, that's this part down here, the family some saw the adults in our, as our ancestors watching over us. Others saw these as parents signifying whole ha families ripped apart and also reuniting to represent healing. <coughs> Doreen Bernard Makwa, survivor, who attended Subanaki Residential School she says about the family that survivors experience horrific atrocities while prisoners in the institutions. They were prisoners in the institution. It's important that this image show the love and strength that colonialism tried to steal from them. Despite genocide, they are still here fighting for justice and restitution as true warriors. On the flag, there is an incomplete circle. See, there's space here that surrounds this image of family, much the same way that there are still many truths to be told before we come close to understanding the impact residential schools had on survivors, communities, and the entire nation. That's by Eugene Arcand, a Cree survivor who attended St. Michael's Residential School. He goes on to say that, that there is a story yet to be told. We are at a point in time where we have to ask ourselves, how do we want our future generations to see what actions we have taken towards healing and reconciliation? Elder Philip Payton, a Cree survivor who attended Sandy Bay Residential School says, one cannot heal in the same environment where trauma occurred. So healing for residential school survivors requires removal of the colonial and systemic oppression that was designed to steal the language, ceremonies, and ways of knowing. And he goes on to say, it is through our teachings our elders fought to preserve where I found healing. 
This flag shows us a path forward where our culture and values are no longer hidden. So it is through the continued education of non-Indigenous people, like us, that reconciliation can take place. So it's up to us to educate ourselves. There are lots of websites, though, so the, um, the national, what is it called, NC, I had it in here a minute ago, National Center for Truth and Reconciliation. So the NCTR, if you go on your website, it has an education spot that teaches you all about different things. And under the resources, there's the flag and these teachings we're going to talk to you about in the next nine Sundays. So uh, I think we miss Remembrance Day. But uh, know that it's up to us as non-Indigenous people to learn about the Indigenous people and what they have gone through um, as different nations. So through this education, reconciliation can take place. Until there is education, we are stumbling through reconciliation and not making a good attempt at it. So let us educate ourselves. May it be so. We're gonna sing Called by Earth and Sky. I don't know if I'm dancing to this one or not, but you know, <laughs> we can see, you know, this was kind of heavy, so.
Our Bible reading this morning is from Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, and chapter 2, verses 2 to 3, and it's from the message. The problem, as God gave Habakkuk to see it, God, how long do I have to cry out for help before you listen? How many times do I have to yell, help, murder, police, before you come to the rescue? Why do you force me to look at evil, stare trouble in the face day after day? Anarchy and violence break out, quarrels and fights all over the place. Law and order fall to pieces. Justice is a joke. The wicked have the righteous hamstrung and stand justice on its head. And then God answered, write this, write what you see. Write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. This vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait and it doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on its way. It will come right on time. So I did warn the AV team that I was going to come over here because, you know, we don't get somebody in this pulpit very often and I need to switch your neck around so you're not always facing that way. <laughs> Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So we're an impatient people, are we not? We want answers right away. We carry our cell phones, yeah, in my back pocket, so that we do not have to stop what we are doing to call someone. Or we can even text or call when we shouldn't, like in a meeting. Or even when we are driving. We don't wait to answer that call either when we're driving, nor do we take the time to pull off to the side of the road so we're safe. My mother hated to wait for things. My brother Dennis lived with her and she had him so well trained. She would say to him, when you have time, or she would say, sometime we need to. Well, almost before she finished speaking, he would be up and doing exactly what he thought she wanted. So for Dennis and mom, the should be done when he had time or sometimes we should became now in capital letters. There were problems sometimes when he jumped up immediately to do what she suggested and did not wait. Some of the problems involved not getting all the information from my mother so that things weren't necessarily done the way she had intended. Some of the problems involved not having everything needed to do what she wanted. And some problems involved my brother not having the skills to actually do what my mother wanted. Well, Dennis loved to paint. Oh, and not pictures, but walls and ceilings. And he was really good at it. When there was any painting that needed to be done, at our camp or anywhere actually, Dennis did it. Mom suggested one Sunday as they were leaving, um, now you call it a cottage, we call it a camp, so I'm gonna mention camp, but think cottage. As they were leaving the camp, uh, she said that at some time, some time, the outhouse needed to be painted. Well, the next day, Dennis went back up to the camp to do just that. When he got there, he realized that there wasn't enough paint to do the job properly, but 
Dennis knew Mum wanted that outhouse painted, so he improvised. And when Mum came back the next weekend, she was shocked and dismayed to find the outhouse that had been white with red trip was now a lovely shade of pink. <laughs> she had him immediately jump in the boat, go to the landing, and drive back to town to the hardware store and get the proper colors. She just couldn't wait another weekend. It had to be fixed now. And as soon as he got back, I don't even think he had a breath, the outhouse was repainted the proper colors, white with red trim. There's a reason why our camp is called the red and white. But it wasn't just for getting things done. Mom hated to wait for anything. She was always early for everything. And then she would get angry when she had to wait. I, re I remember she came home from grocery shopping very upset, actually very angry because she couldn't get in the store and we went, what happened? She said the workers were there in the store, but they wouldn't let her in. It turned out she'd arrived 15 minutes before the store even opened. She said they could see her in the parking lot. And since they were already there, just standing around doing nothing, they could have let her in. In today's Bible reading, the prophet Habakkuk is angry. He's angry at God, and he's not afraid to let God know it. He blames God for all the violence around him. How long do I have to cry out for help before you listen? How long? How many times do I have to yell, help murder police, before you come to the rescue? Habakkuk looks around at all that is happening around him and wonders, where are you, God? If we are in relationship, God, where are you? Why haven't you done something about all that is happening in the world around me? Habakkuk asks. I'm sick and tired of all that I see around me, and I think it's about time that you do something about it, God. Couldn't you just see him? Don't we ask the same thing? Don't we? Where is God in the things that we see or hear about? Where is God in the lost and missing women and girls? Where is God in the residential schools and the unmarked graves? Where is God in the war in the Ukraine? or in Af Afghanistan, in the extreme weather events like the flood in Pakistan or the hurricane Fiona and Ian? Where is God in the violence that seems to be a nightly occurrence in our towns and our cities? Where is God in the life of the homeless, of the immigrants trying to struggle in Canada, in the sick and the dying? Where is God? And like Habakkuk, Aren't we expecting God to do something about all of it? Just take care of all of that. We're tired of seeing it. Have you asked, shouted, or even wondered where is God in the troubles and evils of our world? I know I have. Rachel Wren suggests that speaking out our anger is what it means to be righteous. So speaking out our anger is what it means to be righteous. According to the scholar Jerome Creech, the term righteous is not first and foremost a moral term. Instead, it is, first of all, a relational term. The righteous are those who are dependent on God. And then because they know they are dependent on God, they trust in God's laws and follow them. The wicked feel free to violate God's laws and their neighbor's needs because they don't rely on God. They do not have a relationship with God. Habakkuk goes on to let God know that he thinks God is failing. No, he didn't get a passing grade at all. He thinks the wicked are winning, and he actually says that out loud to God. But then in verse 2, God answers Habakkuk and promises a vision. A vision of what will come. But, but it's not going to come right away, but it will come in time. It will come at the right time. And we don't know when that right time is. And we must wait for it. 
until that right time comes. The righteous, those who depend on God, are to live by their faith. In other words, to, to live as one of God's righteous people means to live as those who have been promised a vision but haven't received it yet. But know it's coming. We are not to give up the faith. Even though the vision is slow in coming, but as a righteous people, people who rely on God, we will trust that that vision will come. Rolf Jacobson reminds us that the living the life of faith is that of a, of a soul rejoicing in God's blessings. To be rejoicing in God's blessings. Even when the barns, the branches, and the pastures are empty. It's a picture of a heart that loves God, rather than merely the blessings God gives. Of a heart that rejoices in God the giver, rather than merely the gifts of God. It's a picture of one who knows life will inevitably bring low moments, and that these low moments are not signs that God has abandoned us. The righteous trust that God will in fact find us in our suffering. God is not only found or even primarily found in the high points of our lives, but rather God also meets us in our low points. Thanks be to God. Amen. Welcome, friends and relations. We meet here in the house of the Creator at the great feasting table. The Holy One who walked with our ancestors walks with us now and will walk with our children for years to come. In the very air that we breathe, in the sound of the whistling wind and in the slap of the waves on the shore, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks for your presence in the sound of children's laughter, in, in the songs of our elders, we give you thanks for your presence. Lift up your broken hearts. as We lift them up to God. Let us honor our Creator. It is right to honor God. It is right to honor God and to give our thanks. We give our thanks to God. Creator and giver of life, source of love, we bless you for all your gifts. You brought creation to birth and sent prophets to awaken us to your dream, a dream in which everyone is treated with dignity and love, justice and mercy, honor and hospitality. We praise you for elders and prophets, visionaries and leaders, teachers and preachers, all who have shared the great truth of your love. We praise you for our brother Jesus, love in human form, who showed us in womb and tomb, in cradle and cross, in tenderness and compassion, your great heart of love. With the flying ones, the swimming ones, the four-legged ones, the crawling one, with rocks and trees, mountains and plains, with all creation. We humans raise our voices to say, as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As we gather at this feasting table, we remember that on the night before he died, Jesus feasted with his friends. He took a loaf of bread, thanked you as we have thanked you, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Whenever you feast together, remember me. Then he took the cup. And after giving thanks, passed it to his friends, saying, Drink, this cup is the promise of God, made in my blood. Whenever you drink together, remember me. Remembering your, your boundless love, love shown to us in Jesus Christ, we offer you our praise as we proclaim the great mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy Spirit, unite us at this feast and may it strengthen us to live the resurrected and reconciled life of Christ in creation. We remember the children of the residential schools as we pray. We remember how they were plucked up from their homes by a system of arrogance that denied a good way of life. Their tears, their hunger, their loneliness, and their fears are not forgotten. Okay, there's a slide that was missing. John, I'm going to go back to the prayers of the people. Yeah, keep going. There we go. So let us once again do the prayers of the people. We remember the children of the Indian residential schools. We remember how they were plucked up from their homes by a system of arrogance that denied a good way of life. Their tears their hunger, their loneliness, and their fears are not forgotten. The shame that was taught lingers yet. The pain that was inflicted upon their bodies remains. We remember the parents, the aunties, the uncles, the grandmas and the grandpas left to grieve the empty places in their homes and their communities. Mothers were left with tear-strained aprons. Fathers suffered an unyielding silence. How was it they were expected to carry on, having lost their joy, their purpose? And how was it that their community can continue to come together to celebrate life and move toward, together towards a bright future when their future was gone? How long will it take to strengthen family homes and spirits 
How long will it take to heal the memories? Who must we be and what must we do to restore integrity and dignity to your world? God of all transformation in our lament, we cry out to you. God of all healing power in our pain, we call your name. God of all life in our hope, we come before you in humble prayer. We pray that all your children may once again sing and dance the songs planted in their hearts since time immemorial. We pray that their play and their learning may be strengthened in wisdom and truth. May they carry the knowledge of their ancestors, those ways of life that brought abundance and joy to this pilgrimage on earth. We pray for the children's health and wholeness. May they reconnect with your unending love that they may once again know who they are, their giftedness, and their value. We remember those children who have found their home in you. We acknowledge those who left this earth having heard no words of apology or lament. We are grateful that you hold these ones close and have granted to them eternal peace. As we move ahead into a time of truth-telling and reconciliation, we pray for parents and extended family Release them from their feelings of guilt and burden. Lift them from their grief. May their homes once again ring out with laughter and hope. May their communities reflect the joy of their presence. May they come together to work towards reclaiming and renewing minds, bodies, emotions, and spirits. And finally, we pray that one day this world, your world, world will be a place where children are no longer harmed and will never again be removed from a mother's embrace or a father's helping hand. We pray for Marion Boyd and her family as they go through this time of trial. Help them to feel the love and care surrounding them through our thoughts and our prayers. We pray in the name of Jesus, your son, who showed us a way to your kingdom come on earth, all my relations, through with and in Jesus, united in love by the Holy Spirit, we offer all glory to you, creator, source of love, now and always. Amen. Christ's body, broken for you and healed for you. The cup of rich blessing poured out for you. Come, for all things are now ready. Come to the table for your little cups or whatever you have at home with all your relations and your thoughts and share with all in need. Know that this table is open to everyone who can open the little cups. <laughs> the gift of healing for those of us in need. The gift of healing for those of us in pain. The gift of reconciliation for those of us estranged. The gift of assurance for those of us in doubt. And the gift of hope for those of us in tears. May we who share these gifts share Christ with one another and with all our relations. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to remember you in the ordinary things of our lives. When we eat our daily bread, our rice, our tortilla, or potato, 
we remember how you shared what you had with your friends, breaking yourself open. When we drink from the fruits of our harvest, we are reminded of how you continually bless us with your teachings. Our chipped and well-used cups overflow. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God's gifts are all around us and within us. We are invited to share our gifts with those whom we know and those whom we don't know. Let us bless our offerings which have been given by pre-authorized remittance, by e-transfer, by being placed in the plates at the back of the sanctuary, and by volunteering our time and our talents. Let us pray. Creator God, you have blessed us with many gifts. May we continue to share what you have given to us with each other. And we ask that you multiply what we have offered so that the world around us can be what you created it to be. Amen. Last time we get to sing today. So, Spirit, open my heart.
May the love of God go with you everywhere you go, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.